So let's talk about two performance metrics that we really care about uh, in any logic gate, power and area. So a, an enhancement load inverter, for example, and let's talk about an inverter first and then consider a bigger gate, is going to have power dissipation. And the reason it's going to have power dissipation is that it have, has resistors. Whenever you have resistors and you have current flow, you have power dissipation. So the question is, where are the resistors where the current flows? The resistors are the channels of these two NMOS devices. So if you look at an NMOS device, whenever there is a channel, that means that there is an N path between the drain and the source. This N path has a resistance, and we found out that the value of this resistance is never going to be zero, and thus, there's going to be power dissipation in this resistance. Resistance, current, means power dissipation. So if we look at the inverter, we can calculate the power dissipation in the inverter by calculating the power dissipated over each uh, transistor. And actually calculating power is really easy. If you think of power as I squared times R or V squared over R, you're going to spend a lot of time thinking about what the resistance of the transistor is, and it is a nonlinear quantity and it is not helpful. But if you think of power as what it is, power really is current times voltage, then that really helps because it will also help later on when we talk about dynamic power. So power is always the product of current times voltage. This is uh, power stored, power dissipated, power drawn, any kind of power is the product of, of current times voltage. All that matters really is that you use the correct current and the correct voltage. So, for example, on the driver, the voltage is V output, while on the load, the voltage is VDD minus V output. So we can potentially calculate power by calculating the power in each transistor and summing them up. However, if we think about bigger circuits like NOR or NAND, it's going to be uh, a little bit more complicated because we have three transistors. And if we think about the bigger even uh, gates, it continues to become more and more complicated as we get more and more inputs. But something that is really helpful is to recall that power dissipated, power dissipated in transistors is equal to power drawn from supply. So when, whenever we have a resistor, resistance only circuit, an R only circuit, then power drawn from the supply has to be dissipated in resistors. It's not going to go anywhere else. And so it's usually much easier to think of power drawn from supply because it is a single quantity that you have to calculate. And so power drawn from supply in this case is equal to current flowing in the supply times the value of the supply. But the current flowing in the supply is equal to the current flowing in the load, which is equal to the current flowing in the driver. So power drawn from the supply is actually very easy to calculate. It's I driver or I load multiplied by VDD. So the only problem we have here is that I in the driver or I in the load is going to depend on whether V output is V output high or V output is V output low. That's fine. Let's calculate power in each case and let's call this power high and this is power low. So power high refers to power dissipated when the output is high, power low refers to power dissipated when the output is low. So the current when the output is high is zero and so the power is also zero because we have an open circuit created by a cutoff driver and the driver current is zero. There is zero current being uh, drawn from the supply. There's zero power being dissipated in the transistors. It's as simple as that. But when we have the output low, there is a current flowing and we can calculate its value. So we are going to calculate a value of P low. And how do we calculate I driver? By solving the quadratic equation for V output low and then substituting for the value of V output low in either the current of the driver or of the load. And then we get a value for uh, power low. So what's the power average? If you want a single value to represent power dissipation for this inverter, it's going to be P high plus P low over 2. And of course, there is an assumption here that the input is uh, 0 half of the time and 1 the other half, which is a good assumption to make in the absence of any other information. So let's think of a, of a more complex gate. Let's think, for example, of an OR gate. So an OR gate is not going to be, uh, you know, 
it's not going to be too different from the inverter in terms of, of power dissipation. So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, power supplied equals power dissipated. But in this case, we have to notice that power dissipated has to be calculated as I in the load multiplied by VDD because the current flowing in the supply is the current flowing in the load. We cannot define it as the current flowing in the driver because which driver? Is it one of them or both of them? Which brings us to the question, are we calculating power for the case of 00, zero output, 0, 01, zero 02, 10 zero or 11? One one? So we calculate power for each of these input cases and then we see what happens. So for example, when uh, the, the input is 00, zero uh, both NMOS transistors, both uh, driver transistors are cut off. The current flowing through both of them is going to be zero. And the current flowing through the load is also going to be zero. And thus, we can conclude that power in this case is equal to zero. But P01 is not going to be equal to zero. In this case, we have to solve for V output low one, which happens uh, when transistor MB is on and the load is on and we solve the ohmic saturation equation, get the value for V output low, and substitute in either the uh, current equation of transistor MB or ML to get a current value. This gives us a value for P01. Similarly, P10 can be obtained by first obtaining the current flowing when transistor A is on and transistor B is off. P11, on the other hand, uh, is going to be calculated using a bigger current. This is the summation of the currents of MA and MB. But pay attention to the fact that uh, this is not the summation of the two currents in the case of 0, 01 and 10 input. In fact, the drain voltage is going to change, thus changing the current in both transistors. We know that the summation of these two currents is going to be larger than either uh, of them uh, on its own, but it's not exactly adding them uh, both up. What we have to do is we have to uh, represent these two transistors in parallel as one transistor whose k is the summation of the two k's and then solve the quadratic equation to find a value for v output low which we substitute in the load current to get a value for current flow and thus get a value for power. We know that p11 is going to be greater than either p01 or p10 because in the 1 1 case we are drawing a bigger current. So the average power is going to be p01 plus P10 plus P11 divided by 4 because we have four cases, but one of them, the 0, 0 case, is going to have a zero power dissipation. So we also wanted to calculate an estimate for area. So for area, we are going to estimate the area of the uh, logic gate as approximately equal to the summation of the transistor gate areas. So if you look at the transistor, it has an area uh, for the polysilicon gate, which is uh, L times W. Now, this is a fraction of the area of the transistor because we are ignoring the area of the source and the drain for the one, and we are also ignoring the area of wires used to connect transistors. In module 7, we will find out that the true area of the gate is going to be much larger than this, and so, you know, this area that we calculate now is only going to be useful as a uh, back of the envelope measurement. So uh, area is going to be the summation of uh, W times L. And uh, be aware that this is only good enough to compare gates to each other. So it is only mildly useful as an apples to apples comparison between different gates in terms of area, but it doesn't represent anything meaningful in terms of the absolute value of the expected area of the gate.